Hey guys, Adam here with Universal Wellness, I'm bringing to you a video on the introduction to why we experience pain and what is the construct of pain. How does pain, how does pain get created in our bodies? Is it only our bodies that tell us to experience pain or is there more to it than that? And I want to bring in this uh, therapeutic neuroscience education to you so you can understand and get a, a more of an idea of how, why we experience pain and what is behind that and to also um, educate you on the uh, mis misguided um, information that's out uh, in the medical world to some degree. Um, so I just want to start off with uh, letting you know that all pain is a construct of the brain's decision for you to experience it or not. So an example would be like if you were running uh, going for a run um, out in the day and you're running across the street and you twist your ankle and you experience this sharp pain in the ankle and you kind of fall, um, then you your brain tells you, yes, there's an injury there, we must experience it. So it swells it up, it sends a signal of pain and, and such thing. But say you're doing the same thing, you're running that morning and uh, you twisted your ankle and you fell and you started to experience a little bit of pain, but then there's a speeding vehicle coming towards you, you would get up and get out of the way of the vehicle and there would be less pain being experienced in your ankle. Why is that? Why would, if it's just your, if it's your ankle causing pain, why would the pain disappear or lessen um, because of something uh, uh, external force coming in changing your brain's perception. So that's pretty much what it is about, is the brain can allow you to experience pain temporarily, or it can also reduce or inhibit pain depending on what's the greater threat in the environment. So today I'm gonna to give you a brief example of how the brain uses um, the body to transfer the information, also to get information from your body's input systems. There's three input systems. The first one is your visual input systems, okay? Most of us um, may not be aware, but we have muscles, there's six of them, uh, that control our eyes. And so our eyes, our visual system, gives us a very, very deep um, uh, input information to our brain um, of what's going on in our envir environment, especially reflexive interpretation. So like if you hear a noise or something and it's dark out, and you hear a noise and you're not sure what it is, you'll notice your eyes will dart all around and try to figure out where the, where the problem is or where the threat is, okay? So our eyes give our brain a lot of information because our brain literally is stored in this, you know, skull and it's inside this uh, skull and doesn't have anything to view uh, the external environment except for your, through your input systems and one of them being your visual system. Also, when you get injured or experience trauma, like example, a car accident, um, wherever your eyes are fixated during the accident, your cerebellum and other parts of your brain store that memory. And then the brain starts to inhibit the movement of that eye in that direction, uh, depending on how well you neurologically um, reintroduce that the pain, that the threat is not there from the accident anymore. The next input system, the second one, is the vestibular system. So this is a, it's pretty much deep in your skull, but it's it's through your ears. It's right be, right be, lined up with your ears, and it lays actually right behind your eyes at a forty five degree angle. So this is it goes all the way in here. There's there's many different parts of the vestibular system. There are five main things that we'll talk about in further videos, right? But this is pretty much it right here, part of it. So here is the cochlea, there's a cupula, and then there's these, these canals here. And there's also two otolith organs that help your brain know where you are in space, even if your eyes aren't helping you know where you are. So it's kind of like when you're, you're, you're getting up at night and you're, you need to go to the restroom or whatever, and you're stumbling in the dark, part, and you can't see very well, and you're cautiously moving, Part of the vestibular system helps you know where you are, where your body is in space, even though you can't see. So these canals are specifically very important. So when you like turn your head quickly or up or whatever, there's different canals that monitor this, your movement 
with indo, indo lymph, lymph that pushes these fins that are inside your canals, okay? And gives your brain vibrational information to, to tell you where you're at. So anyways, why that's important is uh, if we get um, any type of ear infections or head traumas or even loud music or sound exposure, it can damage the vestibular system and cause havoc uh, and cause what's called a mismatch signal in the brain in relation to what the eyes are telling the, the brain as well. So the eyes and the ears of the vestibular system, the inner ears, have a deep relationship. They're very, very deep, closely connected. And it's almost an instant, it's pretty much an instant um, relationship or communication with the brain. Then the third system is your body. So your body has all these receptors, the peripheral nerves that run out through the spine. So you have the spine here. And along the spine, you have all these different nerves that are actually related to your autonomic nervous system. So there's nerves here that activate your sympathetic nervous system. And there's nerves here that calm your nervous system, which means activating your parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. So when we do things in life or we move in certain ways, sometimes um, these nerves will turn on and off um, in different ways. And we... We need to regulate that to manage our pain and sometimes when or to reduce or to eliminate our pain. So um, most of the time when we visit um, our doctor friends, you know, to help us um, get past a chronic pain pattern, there is sometimes an, uh, not, the, not the most congruent education on what's necessarily happening and sometimes it's more fear-based and the fear of uh, not knowing why the pain is there. So sometimes the doctor's like, we don't know why exactly, or, but we think you should do this or that or this. Um, nothing's wrong with that necessarily, except for the education. So they don't have time to educate um, the client about how pain is experienced in the body through the brain's uh, construct of deciding that and predicting that. So what I'm getting at is that most pain is, is also um, stimulated or re-encouraged re to be experienced by the um, fear of not knowing what's going on or the fear that they're not, the person's not going to get better. So again, the three input systems. And then the last thing I'll kind of talk to you about on this introductory video is that these three systems are kind of like satellites with GPS, okay? So we're going to pretend like um, the analogy is going to be your brain is your your phone so say you're driving along and you need to get somewhere and you put in google maps or whatever and you want to get to a certain location you'll put the information in we're going to pretend that's your brain and then google maps is like your cerebellum and other parts of your brain like your brain stem and they give information right out to the body to do the motor movement or to get where you need to go so and with GPS, the phone sends a ping of information out into outer space and these three satellites, if not more, pick up this signal and they tell the brain, your phone, through the GPS system, your cerebellum and other parts of your brain, where you are on the planet as you drive to your location you want to get to. So there's three, three satellites and the brain works very similar with the body. There's three input systems or satellites visual system, vestibular system, and body. So they communicate with each other and give information. So as you're moving along in the world and your brain needs information on how to keep you safe and keep you away from threat, those three systems, visual, vestibular, and body, give your brain information. And if these are off and they're causing problems or there's issues from an accident or whatever, or an injury, then it might not be getting the best information to the brain input wise. And so the output of motor movement without experience, experiencing loss of range of motion or pain gets very much reduced. Or you experience chronic pain over a certain amount of time if the neurological issue is not handled or found as the root cause. So just like GPS, if you're driving along, and one of those satellites goes out of range, you, all of a sudden you get this loading si signal on your phone and you don't know where you are and the, the, the GPS application can't tell you where to go and it's very frustrating and it causes a lot of delays and uh, abilities to get where you need to go on time, whatever. So that's pretty much a little analogy on how the GPS 
um, signaling um, through the phone is in very deep relationship with how your brain and your body work together through the nervous system. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there'll be more to come. I just wanted to give you a brief description uh, of awareness of how pain works in relation to the brain being the construct of, of you experiencing pain or not. If you want to find out more information, please visit my page, Universal Wellness AZ on Facebook, or also you can visit my um, YouTube channel. It's called Adam Thompson and Universal Wellness. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care. Have a great day.